If you're over the age of 50, then this video has been specially crafted for you. If you're under the age of 50, then all things being equal, one day you will be 50 plus and this information about your voice and singing in the latter years will be super helpful. As they say, forewarned is forearmed, so regardless of age, stick around if you want to learn more about the ageing singing voice. Sound check. Check one, check two. G'day and welcome to another Voice Essentials video. My name is Dr. Dan. I'm so glad you could join me today for another in-depth look at the human voice. I love reading and responding to all the comments on my channel and this comment left by Barbara on my video about premenstrual voice syndrome recently caught my eye. Barbara writes, thank you for this Dr. Dan. I'm happy to find a vocal specialist who is willing to deal with sensitive and very important topics like this. Now that I'm officially a senior citizen, monthly hormonal changes are no longer an issue for me. However, I have discovered that with diminishing estrogen levels comes difficulty reaching high notes or sounding squeaky in notes that previously were full and strong. Is it true that our female vocal cords get thicker as we get older? I'd love to see a video about the aging human voice. I'm also very interested in what happens to male vocal cords as they age. And is there anything we older folks can do to keep our voices strong and sounding good? Thanks. Now that's a chunky comment that poses some interesting questions for our discussion. So Barbara, this video is for you and every singer who continues to enjoy using their voice for singing in their latter years. And in the interest of full academic acknowledgement, I've taken much of the information that follows from the comprehensive text Manual of Singing Voice Rehabilitation by Lida Skurs, to which I'll leave an affiliate link below should you wish to purchase your own copy. Sound check. We may not like to accept it, but our bodies do change as we get older. And when it comes to the singing voice, there are a variety of changes that the elderly person may experience. Symptoms such as altered vocal range, increased levels of effort when singing, unstable tone, reduced volume, and difficulty when moving between registers might all be experienced by the older singer. So what's causing these changes? And more importantly, can you delay or avoid altogether the seemingly inevitable? First things first, let's talk about some of the contributing factors to many of the symptoms we've just mentioned. One of the most common occurrences among the older population is called vocal fold atrophy. This occurs when the body of the vocal fold, the thyroarytenoid, starts to lose its bulk, becoming thinner and often weaker. As many of us already know, the singing voice, as well as the spoken voice, requires finely tuned coordination between muscular engagement according to applied air pressure levels. When the mass of the vocalis muscle is thinned and weakened by age, the singer can find it harder to gain full closure of the vocal folds. This in turn can leave a small glottal gap, sometimes known as a glottal chink, along the rear third of the, uh, of the glottis. A glottal chink allows more air to escape than might be deemed appropriate, and this can also leave the voice sounding breathy and lacking in strength and volume. Unfortunately, the natural response, but not necessarily the right response, is for the singer to simply push harder, and just like their more youthful counterparts, any voice that is placed under inappropriate loads of subglottal pressure runs the risk of further wear and tear, not to mention the development of vocal pathologies such as nodules. Sound check. As we age, there is also a physiological alteration to the structure of our cells, the building blocks of our anatomy. The vocal folds don't escape this change, with many singers experiencing a notable modification to their sense of vocal agility. Now, this is due in part to the, a reduction in vocal fold elasticity. Elastic recoil helps muscles, in this case the vocal folds, to quickly adjust and respond to that being required of it. The aging of the human body can also have a detrimental effect on a person's skeletal structure. Now, you don't need a PhD in human anatomy to understand that if the bone and muscle structures are weakening, then body alignment, what many people refer to as posture, will also be impacted. When the singer is less able to recruit the entire instrument, that is their whole body, to produce sound, their larynx 
is required to complete the vocal task all by itself, something it's not designed to do, at least not over the long term. Then another significant change experienced by many older singers is a dry mouth and vocal tract. This is because as we age, our mucus glands produce a lesser amount of secretions. Additionally, many people in their senior years are taking a variety of medications that often act as a diuretic, further exacerbating the impact of reduced lubrication. Less lubrication is often experienced as a thickening of the mucosal layer. This not only can cause the older singer to work harder because of a higher phonatory threshold pressure, but might also lead to the constant clearing of one's throat because of a cloggy sensation both in the mouth and pharynx. Before we finish, I want to quickly discuss the effects of menopause on the female voice as well as offer some helpful tips when learning to sing with an older voice. But before I do, I'd love you to hit the thumbs up button if you're finding today's information helpful. Sound check. Girls, you have one extra thing to contend with when it comes to your voice getting older menopause. As you may well have already suspected, it's your fluctuating hormones, specifically estrogen and progestogen, that cause you all the grief. The two most significant impacts of menopause are vocal fold atrophy and a swelling, what medicos call edema, of the vocal fold mucosa. These two issues combine to reduce range, increase a sense of vocal fatigue and require higher levels of vocal effort. The significance of these changes may be mitigated by HRT, hormone replacement therapy, but this option should be discussed in depth with your gynaecologist due to the heightened risk of cancers, stroke and dementia. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the challenges facing the older singer. It would all be all too easy to throw in the towel and stop singing once you turn 50, but for those of you who regularly watch my channel and read my blog, you would know I believe anything but. Older singers have so much to offer society with their voice. Yes, we do need to manage our expectations and age with dignity, but this certainly doesn't mean we hang up our mic and step off the stage never to be heard again. The number one key when singing as an older person is summed up by the old adage, use it or lose it. Much of the recent research concerning older anatomies shows that the aging body will respond positively to a balanced and consistent exercise. The voice will age, but much of the aging process, vocally speaking, can be slowed by regular singing. I think it's also helpful to remember that you have already been through a significant voice change earlier in life. When a young person's voice transforms through puberty, they must adjust their repertoire, the, the type and length of performances they do, as well as redefining their vocal identity in accordance with the new sounds that their voice makes. So too it is for the aging voice. Learn to manage your expectations and you may well find a depth of joy in your singing you didn't know was possible in your younger years. Of course, some of you watching this video may be confronted with a voice significantly altered by the aging process. If this is you, then I recommend you seek out the assistance of a speech therapist or a singing voice specialist like myself to assist you in regaining your vocal confidence. Much of what you feel you have lost can be recovered with the use of vocal activities such as semi-occluded vocal tract exercises and resonant voice therapy. And while activities such as those on my singing exercise CD, Dr. Dan's Voice Essentials, will be helpful to singers of all ages, I commend to you the one-on-one -on -one process when working with your older voice. We've covered a lot of ground today and I hope the video has been helpful. If you're an older singer and you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please take a moment to do so. Here at Voice Essentials, we welcome every voice, especially those voices who have experienced life beyond the well-worn cult of youth. I look forward to seeing you in the next Voice Essentials video. I'm Dr. Dan. Sing well.